And welcome, welcome to this edition, this final uh, edition of the five essential ingredients of a true business breakthrough. My name is Sean Smith. That's me, uh, caricature version of me, at least uh, on the screen there. And this is a Mary Kay only masterclass. It's not content that only applies to Mary Kay. It's just that the examples that I give will be only Mary Kay because that's everybody that's on the line is uh, Mary Kay or should be Mary Kay. Um, but these concepts really apply to every aspect of our life. And so I appreciate you being here. My purpose tonight is to go for about 45, 60, 75 minutes. And I'm going to share with you everything that I personally know to be true about creating a, a real business breakthrough, not a short-term breakthrough that returns itself back to the original patterns, right? A lot of times we'll get motivated and we'll make some phone calls or something and you can create some, you can create some success, but then in a very short period of time, it all comes back, right? All the, the old stuff, the old patterns, the old challenges, the old failures, what have you come back. And that's not a true breakthrough because you didn't fundamentally shift, right? You just created some short-term success. And I want to give you the five ingredients the components of your life that you need to look at in order for a long-lasting true breakthrough to happen in your Mary Kay business. Now, again, it's not all about business. These elements are much bigger than just business, but that's the only way to really have the foundational shifts in your business as well. And then we'll talk about a couple of things. You don't need more confidence and why most people's efforts are actually creating bigger problems than solutions. And expectations that I have for this webinar. Uh, first of all, if you have any nuggets that you're picking up, anything that you feel, you know, you big ahas or anything like that, uh, the best place to post those is in the Pink Caddy Coaching Facebook group. You've got the address right there, um, Pink Caddy or Facebook.com slash Pink Groups slash Pink Caddy Coaching. If you have questions about the webinar itself, about slides, content, and so forth, you can uh, ask me. For instance, somebody just typed in, has the webinar started? I uh, cannot hear anything. So let me just double check and make sure that the rest of you can hear something. We have one person that says they cannot hear. I believe it's just a uh, an issue with her. Okay, great. So I'm clear for other people. Um, so you're not going to hear this, but obviously uh, it's an issue with your line. So if you have questions, then go ahead and type them into this chat box. And what I invite you to do is take notes of inspiration. Don't just take notes of the stuff that's on my slide. Take notes of the, the ideas that you get, you know, the thoughts that are triggered and uh, any inspirational thoughts that you have. Stick around to the end. I'm going to give away a bonus of the seven mind shifts of sales audio to everybody that's still around at the end. And then I will also give away a $500 private coaching package um, with me. So stick around to the end. And this webinar is going to be brutally honest. <laughs> I didn't want to sound like it was just going to be brutal. Uh, it'll be brutally honest. It will be very real. Uh, it might be confrontational. I don't know. We'll see what comes out. But my intention is that we have a very real discussion about what it takes to have a breakthrough. So for those of you that don't know me, uh, I'll go through my brief bio here pretty quick. I'm a husband and father. That's my family there on the screen. My wife, Sybil, my daughter, McKenna, my son, Exley. And I have an amazing family. I really do. My journey into personal development started when I was 13 years old on December 17, 1986. I was hit by a car as I was riding my bike to school and I was almost killed. I should have been killed according to the details of the accident. Uh, this car was traveling 50 miles an hour. I pulled right out in front of it. Um, but obviously I wasn't killed and, and I wasn't, uh, apparently I wasn't done that day. And because of that near-death experience, I made a promise to myself that no matter what happens in life to me, I was going to do everything that I could to live the life I want, right? Because I realized that we're not ever promised our next breath, and so I never wanted to have regrets about how I lived my life. And I made a promise that I would live a life of excellence and always 
strive for my best and never settle for mediocrity. But over the next 20 years, I didn't really live up to that promise. Uh, through no f fault of my own, it certainly wasn't conscious, but even though I had the right work ethic and I had the desire and I showed up early and I stayed late, I still wasn't creating what I wanted to in my life. And then in 2005, I had a gigantic breakthrough with a life coach in a seminar that I was in, and he helped me realize that I had some internal conflicts with a belief pattern that I had in a belief system that I wasn't good enough, and that's what was really holding me back from all of these areas of potential joy and happiness and success in my life. And when I had that experience, I was so drastically changed, fundamentally changed and foundationally changed, that when I went back home, my wife asked what happened. She saw a change in me, and my friends started to ask me, you know, what I was on, if I was on some kind of substance, you know, and then they started asking me for it because they wanted some. They wanted to experience what they started to see in me biologically. So this change was neurological. It was in my body. And I just got so lit up and so excited about the way I felt about life and the way I saw myself and my excitement that I wanted to learn how he did that to me. And I wanted to share everything that I was learning with other people too. So that's when I decided to become a speaker, I got certified as a coach, and in 2006, I did a one Mary Kay event that was only going to be an hour, and then I was never going to do anything with Mary Kay ever again, and uh, 11 years later, I have a website called Pink Caddy Coach, and I have pink uh, business cards and pink ties, and like I've done so many trainings in the Mary Kay world, and I've trained tens of thousands of independent beauty consultants since, so I've fallen into the pink bubble, and I loved everything that i found. And I really appreciate being around people that are hungry for more in life. So that's why I honor you. I really appreciate you and admire your decisions to want more out of life and, and, uh, and even attend this, this training. So let's start with a very common question that I have or a common uh, condition that a lot of people have or belief that a lot of people have around confidence. So some people ask me, how do I get more confidence or do I need more confidence? Or if I ask people what's standing between you and your goals, a lot of times they'll say confidence. And the reality is you don't need more confidence. The difference between confidence and self-esteem is drastic and it's really important for you to understand. Confidence is your belief in your skills as a performer. Right? Can you do certain activities? Can your body actually do certain activities? Esteem is the belief that you have in your value as a person. So your self-esteem really controls your willingness or your permission to do certain things, but those things are, are not deficient, right? You don't lack the ability to communicate with people. You lack the internal permission to communicate with people because if they say no, then you'll beat yourself up. That's pretty much how the sabotage works, right? So you don't need confidence. You don't need to learn the ability of opening your mouth and making sounds and communicating with other humans. You already know how to do that. You do that all the time. There's just certain scenarios where you might not allow yourself to do it. You might not give yourself permission because if you feel rejected, then you're going to beat yourself up. And the only reason you would be beating yourself up is if in that moment, your value has been taken away. It, the only reason why you would need and deserve punishment is if your value has somehow suffered based on what they said. Now, this is not a conscious conversation. Nobody is saying, oh, this lady just said no to me. My self-esteem just dropped. Therefore, I need punishment. That's not a conscious pattern, but that's really what's happening, right? I mean, why else would you deserve punishment unless somehow you just did something wrong or somehow you just lost your value as a person. So what most people need is not more confidence, nor do they need more self-esteem because I also believe that you cannot raise your self-esteem. Your actual self-esteem, which is different than your perception of your self-esteem, but your actual self-esteem is finite. 
you have a certain amount of value as a person because you are here, because you are created. And your value as a person cannot go up through your accomplishments, nor can it go down through your failures. So if we really understand that, then regardless of what people say or do, good or bad, our self-esteem stays the same. So it's not a matter of increasing your self-esteem, and it's not a matter of increasing your confidence because you don't need to. It's really a matter of disconnecting these two things. It's about stopping to – got to stop pretending that our accomplishments determine our self-esteem. So if you feel really good about yourself when things are going well, but then really bad about yourself when things are not going well, you have a connection. And it's an unhealthy one because you'll always be unstable in a business that requires you to communicate with people. And in a business that is going to see more failure, and I'm putting that in quotes, than success. So if your emotions plummet, when you feel failure or when you feel lack of success and they and you're elated when somebody says yes to you you're going to be emotionally unstable as a human being and that's not healthy it's also not fun and it's not good for your system it's not good for your physical system so let me know in the webinar here those of you that are live in the webinar let me know if this is landing for you let me know if this resonates with you this idea that your accomplishment and your self-esteem are attached. Excellent. Cool. Everybody's saying yes, 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 yes. I never realized that. This makes sense. Cool. And part of what I want you to understand is that you don't need to be fixed. You're not broken. You're not deficient. We just need to disconnect some things that are connected right now. And we need to re-engage in some things that are not engaged in right now, that are not connected right now, right? So before we go any further, actually, I want to uh, do a, a quick poll because I think it relates exactly to what we just talked about. So I'm going to put this poll up, and I want you to answer this quick question. It's very simple. It's one question on a scale of one to five. How intellectually committed – are you to your business? So if you're on your computer, you should have seen a poll just pop up inside the webinar window or maybe outside it. And it's a scale of one to five, how intellectually committed to your business are you? And that means in your mind, how committed to you, how committed are you to achieving your goals, uh, achieving your dreams, hitting your goal of director or Cadillac or national or red jacket or whatever the goals are that you have? How consciously committed are you to your goals in Mary Kay, in your business? I'll give you about maybe 10, 15 more seconds to answer that question. Uh, five being the highest, by the way. Five is the highest and one is the lowest. How intellectually committed are you to your business? Okay, perfect. I'm going to close the poll. Most of you have voted, and thank you for taking that little survey. Um, so here are the results. Most people, by far, are three, four, and five. Three, four, and five are right around 30% for all three of those, and that makes sense. Most people would assess themselves to be on the higher end of that scale, and just a few people said one or two, so that makes sense. So here's the next question, and I want you to answer this question very honestly. How actually committed are you to your business? And by that I mean if somebody were to take a look at you, if they were to follow you around and they were to take a look at what your commitments are on a daily basis or on a weekly basis or what you say you're going to accomplish, what you say you're going to do, and then whether you do it or not. How actually committed are you? So for instance, if you uh, swear up and down that you're going to do 10 phone calls a day, for the next week or so, and then we check in and you haven't done any phone calls, then you're not committed at all because you haven't actually done the work, right? So this is how much from an action standpoint 
if somebody was to neutrally observe you, what would they say? How committed is this person according to the actions that this person is taking? And I don't mean for this to upset you. I just want to show you that most people are in a state of disconnect between their intellectual commitment and their actual commitment. So I'm just going to give you about 10 more seconds, and then I'll show you the results of this one. It's not surprising, um, but it's very interesting. Excellent. So I'm going to close the poll and look at the results of this one. Now the majority of the answers, almost 90%, have shifted down. 90% of the answers before were in the top the the top three, three, four, and five. Now almost 90% of the answers are in the bottom three, one, two, and three. And the majority, as you can see, uh, are two. And then one right behind that, and then three, four, five. So what that shows us is that most people are more committed in their mind than they are in their bodies. That's one of the main themes I want you to get out of this webinar because this is really important to understand that you can understand something but not get it. You can understand something intellectually but not get it biologically. So for instance, many of you know the intellectual reframes around fear, right? You know that you know maybe an acronym of false evidence appearing real or maybe um, every no gets you closer to a yes or some will, some won't, so what, right? You know the intellectual reframe for fear. But if somebody is in front of you and you want to talk to them, even though you know how to how to reframe or handle your fear intellectually, how many of you still will succumb to it? Or you know that if somebody tells you no, it's not a big deal, but when they say no, you still react to it biologically, like you feel it in your body, right? You feel the tingling, you feel the upset. So how many of you, just by saying yes, know certain things intellectually, but your body still responds emotionally? in a negative sense. Excellent. I've got all kinds of people saying yes, 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 yes. So I just want you to know you're not alone and I want you to know that this is the human condition. I mean, this is how it works for most people, right? Intellectually, we understand something, but biologically, we haven't actually shifted it, right? Intellectually, we, we, we have reframed it but biologically, we haven't released it. And so that's the state that most people are in, and that's actually a dangerous state. Because if you think you don't have a problem that you actually have, that's not good. If you think you've cleared up your fears around rejection, but your body hasn't let it go, then that's not good. So somebody just typed in, I, I prep and I prepare materials and time, I take trainings until I'm blue in the face, but to go out and do the legwork and talk to others, I'm stuck. Why? That's why. And I wouldn't disrespect you by trying to give you some generalized one-size-fits-all approach or answer. I don't know. I don't know the details, but what I know is that your body doesn't understand something that your mind does or your body hasn't released something that your mind has, right? So you've got an intellectual reframe, but you don't have a biological release. Now, how many people can relate to what, what this lady just wrote in, by the way? You prep and you understand things, and many of you even train on a lot of the things that still keep you stuck. Right. A lot of people are saying, yes, absolutely, I can absolutely relate. So this is the reality. Yeah, people are saying, I do the same thing, I do the same thing. This is just the reality. And the reason is because you haven't made a neurological shift. See, I'm into something now called neurotransformation. That's what intrigues me. 
at this level of my career in life, that's what I'm in, excited about and that's what I'm most interested in. How can we make the changes in our bodies, not in our minds? Because it's your body that will produce the emotions that will cause you to not talk to the woman that your head has just spent minutes, maybe hours, days, weeks rehearsing what to say. And yet you get to the moment where it's time to say those things that you know cold and your body won't respond. You might get dry throat. You might get all these butterflies in your stomach. It's because you haven't made a neurological shift yet. And without a neurological shift, you can only have temporary results. I don't think I've ever said that before. <laughs> without a neurological shift, you can only have temporary results. Somebody just typed in, my body is trying to say no right now. I really want to run. That's fantastic. Stay. If it's causing you to want to run, yeah, somebody just wrote in panic. If it's causing you to want to run, then that means it's just engaging something that needs to be looked at, right? Somebody says, how do we do that? I'll, I'll explain as much as I can on this webinar. But I also want you to know, just like I said to the other person, it, it would be disrespectful for me to give you a one-size-fits-all solution because that does not exist. I can't, I'm not going to say just get more discipline or just believe more or, you know, just get around your limiting beliefs. Like all of those things are conceptually true, but they don't, they're not going to give you something that you can apply to your unique personal situation. You know, I can't give a one-size-fits-all approach to how to get rid of the fear of success because, you know, there are 91 people on this webinar right now. There are 91 different ways that you created fear of success. So there's not one way that's going to clear 91 of them out. Each of us needs to take a look at our own individual situation. So I'm going to give you conceptually everything that I believe I can on this webinar but you've got to really take a look at it individually, right? And I'll tell you how to do that as well. So this last, or, or this next piece here, um, you know, most people think that they need more of something external. They need more skills, right? Yeah, somebody just typed in, I love my Mary Kay business, but I just don't work it. See, that's a problem. That's a big problem when you actually love something and have resistance to it at the same time. That's a problem. I'm not going to sugarcoat that one, right? That's a problem. And if you just keep trying to love it more without clearing some of the resistance, you won't get anywhere. You'll just keep spinning your tires in the, in the mud. And that's right there. I'm glad you wrote that in. That is why so many people are frustrated, not just in Mary Kay. This is by no means a Mary Kay only conversation. Again, it's just Mary Kay only participants. But so many people are frustrated in Mary Kay because they, they, they don't understand why they won't do the things they really love to do. Here it is. It's because your body hasn't shifted yet, right? So most people are looking for some form of more skills. I want more recruiting skills. I want to learn how to overcome objections. I want to be better at sales. I want to be better at follow-up. I want to be better at organization and time management. All of the skills that are in that little gray slice, if you're seeing the webinar now, that little gray slice that makes up maybe 10% of the circle, all of those skills are actually not difficult to learn. In fact, I would say that most of you have learned all the skills that you'll ever need to learn in Mary Kay in a very short period of time. I think after a week, you've probably learned 90% of the skills, the intellectual knowledge, 
what do you do to show people the products and how do you explain the business and how do you order and how do you run your own inventory and all that stuff that's probably about a week's worth of skills like once you actually get into the training right and that will provide the majority of all the skills that you'll ever need in this business in fact most people complicate the business and that's what slows them down or causes them to reverse so the actual skills the intellect and your ability to communicate which is really the only biological skill you need right like you don't need to have a steady hand to work on disconnecting somebody's uh, vein from their valve in their heart like that's different right you, you just need to open your mouth and communicate and I don't mean to sound demeaning in any way because that's all I need to do too for my business you know there are no higher level of human abilities that we need we just need to be able to communicate with people and then you need to collect some knowledge about the company and, and what to do where to go and that's pretty much it from a skill set standpoint the majority of variables that will determine whether you fail or succeed are all these other ones that you can see on the screen if you're looking on the computer inspiration fear of rejection belief fear of failure motivation energy perseverance focus self-esteem all the inner game that's 90 percent at least if we we're going to try to quantify it of your business and yet most people are just trying to cram more skills in or they know that they need to work on the inner game but they just don't know how and they're working on the inner game in a way that's not actually making any changes in fact it's making it worse because if you have a situation you know if you have a knot and you don't know how to properly untie the knot if you just pull the two ends harder the knot just gets tighter that's all that happens you have to know how to untie the knot and if you just try harder well then the knot gets so tight that you can only cut it loose right and that's again why a lot of people get frustrated because they're they're not really able to untie these knots now let me tell you what my theory is as to one of the reasons why we have all these untied knots and let me tell you how I learned this or, or how I came up with this theory I was uh, teaching a, I don't know a seminar or teleseminar or something like that on um, on kids and how we create our limiting beliefs and how the, the you know the negative things that we experience in our childhood are so profound for the rest of our life and so forth and I was talking about my nephew my nephew is uh, 34 years old now he's 10 years younger than me and when he was around 11 or 12 he started uh, getting into drugs started getting into marijuana and smoking weed and then selling weed and then harder drugs and then selling harder drugs and eventually he started getting into you know into into jail and prison and he and he just recently got out after three years in prison and it's all drug related and, so, and, and but deeper than that it's self-esteem related because when he was young his father used to beat his mother my sister and would also beat him and there was one particular incident where Jeremy was, I think, five years old, and his, and his father was beating him uh, bloody to the point where Jeremy was bleeding, and he was crying, and he was pleading with his father, what did I do? What did I do? And he didn't understand in that moment why what he did wrong and why would his dad, the, the, the dad that he wanted to be like, the dad that he looked like, the dad that he was named after, why would he beat me? This doesn't make any sense. And he was in a fetal position just trying to protect himself from getting hit and kicked by his dad. And as I was speaking this, this one time, I realized Jeremy's still that five-year-old little boy. His self-esteem has never grown beyond that five-year-old incident where he was being kicked and punched by his father. And so I realized that there's this element of Jeremy's self-esteem that that was arrested right like it never grew beyond that point it never continued developing beyond that point so here's my theory my theory is that we are born with all of everything that we need inside of us all of our strength all of our um, power all of our you know wisdom our higher wisdom of course we're gonna learn intellectually but our certainty our truth our courage our stamina like everything we, we pretty much have 
all of that inside of us when we're born, you know, our bodies obviously grow and mature and so forth, but the internal stuff is there. You know, you see little kids learning to walk. They don't sit and cry because they fell. They just get right back up and, and they're, you know, they enjoy the process of learning. And that's not how most adults go after learning, right? So most of the way we do things, most of the way we live as kids, uh, I believe is the right way. And then as we go along life, we have elements of our personalities, either emotions or identities or beliefs or something internally that gets arrested. Just like Jeremy's self-esteem got arrested when he was five and he's now a 34-year-old man trying to regain his self-esteem and, and he doesn't really know how. I mean, he's making a lot of really good strides and he's seeking help, which is awesome. That's his journey, though. His journey is really to, to, to close that gap. And so for some people, it's their trust that was eroded at some point in time. And, and, and the, the longer they live their lives without healing that arrested trust, the more disconnect they have and the less they trust, right? For some people, it's confidence. And for some people, it's safety or for some people it's lovability, right? We have all these identities and at a certain point as we progress through our lives, as we mature, there are elements of these identities that get arrested in time. And those are the reasons that most of us are struggling. Those are the reasons because it's not that you lack anything, it's just that like these identities are not working together, right? So that's my theory of arrested development. If you sort of made a, a map of that, or if you imagined, you know, one person walking uh, their journey, you know, walking on a beach or something, and this is their journey of life, and let's say they've got 10 people behind them, actually people that represent different elements or identities of them. As they walk along the beach, each one of those 10 identities at some point in time will just stop walking and then the person will continue walking. So we've got all of these identities that have been arrested and they're seeking something from us and they really just need us to sort of rescue them, right? Or go back and, and, and realign them. So I believe that none of us is deficient in the ingredients of success or happiness or tremendous wealth. None of us is deficient in the ingredients. We just don't have the ingredients playing together very well. We don't have these identities playing together well. You've got one identity that wants to be super successful and then another identity that's afraid of the spotlight. Those two can't go together. They can't live together. They can't play together. They can't create success together because they have opposing commitments. They have opposing needs, right? So I know this is a little, I don't know, maybe high up in the sky, right? Esoteric or like super high conceptual. But I want to know if this is landing. I want to know if this is making sense. That really what has to happen is we have to untie the knots underneath, you know? And if we don't do the real work that needs to be done, then what we're going to do is just keep creating bigger problems, right? We're going to tie the knots tighter, as I said. And what I want you to understand is that all of your sabotaging patterns, the perfectionism, the procrastination, the time management, the fear of failure, fear of success, all that stuff is actually protection. Those patterns are not patterns that were that, that came with you when you were born. They were patterns that you created at some point in time. And you created them to protect you from something. You created them to protect your feelings for the most part. This usually happens in our childhood at some point in time. You know, we're going through our early childhood or going through our school days and, you know, we, we experience embarrassment or somebody laughs at us because we didn't, you know, convert the fractions to the decimals the right way in fourth grade or whatever it was. And we, we, we see something traumatic or we experience something traumatic and then our brains created defense mechanism, right? A lot of kids um, are quote unquote shy because they don't want to get laughed at because they had a certain experience at some point in time that caused them that doing certain things is emotionally unsafe. 
And so these protection mechanisms are designed to keep us emotionally safe. Cool, I'm just checking in with some of these comments. Uh, a real eye-opener, I need an out or resolution. Yes, very true, awesome, cool. So all of these protection mechanisms are actually designed to keep uh, safe and if what you what you keep doing is trying to use your intellect to try to solve these problems, your unconscious mind will just keep changing the passwords, right? And what I mean by that is, you have the answers inside, but you won't find them using the same mechanism that created the problems, right? So your unconscious mind created perfectionism at some point in time to protect you from something. You're not then just going to demand that the unconscious mind get rid of perfectionism. It's going to be like, I made it on purpose, and now you're going to tell me to just get rid of it? No. And your unconscious mind has the ability to hide the, you know, the actual truth from us because it's trying to hide emotional failure from us. It's trying to keep us emotionally safe, right? And so it thinks it's doing the right thing, but what it's doing is actually sabotaging what we want or what we could create in the world because our unconscious mind, if you think about what I'm saying, most of these patterns were created when we were really young. So most of us are walking around and operating as adults with belief systems and behavior patterns that were created when we were toddlers. And because we don't know that those are just patterns that can be challenged and changed, we never challenge or change them. And so most adults will live the rest of their lives. And I'm not saying they live like a child or they are childish, although that might be our judgment sometimes but they live their lives on the foundation of a toddler's belief system, trying to protect himself or herself from all of the pains that they experienced in young childhood and never really heal those wounds or never remind themselves or never get to the point that they realize they don't need that protection anymore. So, Somebody says, I know I can make the money, but I don't want to make it just to throw it at a money problem. I'm not sure exactly what that means, Roberta, but I'm going to talk about money in a, uh, in a, short, in a short period here. So a true breakthrough is not one where you just keep wrestling with the symptoms of perfectionism and procrastination. It's not one where you keep addressing the protection mechanisms a true breakthrough is one where you don't need the protection anymore. And I want you to understand how profound that difference is. Do you want to keep wrestling with the protection mechanisms or do you want to get rid of your need for them? When you get rid of your need for perfectionism, then it's a lot easier to either go away on its own or it's a lot easier for you to manipulate the patterns and the behaviors because there's no emotional need for it to stay there. But if you just go in and wrestle with the behaviors and patterns, but there's an emotional need for it to stay, you won't get anywhere. The emotional need will always bring it back. It will always call upon the protection. And even if you did figure out a way to get rid of that, protect, that particular protection mechanism, your emotional need would just find another one to protect you. Wow, somebody says, when you tell the story of your nephew, I can almost pinpoint the exact moment when my disconnect happened. That's really profound. I've never had anybody tell me that. Uh, would you mind? I would love to hear the details on that. Would you mind either, either typing that in or sending me an email? <clears throat> so somebody says, if you keep trying to solve the problems in the unconscious mind, keep changing the passwords, how do we solve them? I'm going to get to that, Gene. So what I want you to understand is that this is the difference between continuing to cut the weeds above the ground or removing the seed where the weeds are growing from in the first place, right? Now, this is the work that needs to be done. I've been doing this for 12 years. I've been studying sabotage specifically and almost exclusively for 12 years. I've been studying behavior patterns, beliefs, conflicts, values 
desires. Like I've been studying how the brain works. I've been studying that for almost 12 years. This is the work that needs to be done. It's exciting and scary at the same time because the work itself is actually relatively simple. We just need to get all of our identities to play together better. Right? We need to release some identities and increase some other ones and get them to play together better. You don't need to become a different person. Yet most people think they need to become a different person. They need to learn more skills. They need to get more courage. You don't need more of anything external. You need to bring out more of what's internal that's now currently covered up or being confused by all the pinball action that's going on inside of you. right? And I hope that's an, a hopeful message. You don't need to become anybody different. You need to unbecome all the things that are holding you back. That's exciting, but it's also scary for most people because they don't know how to do it or they think it's going to be really painful. And even if it was going to be really painful, I would say do it anyway because that's the only option to clear the conflict. That's the only option. I mean, if you don't do the work that needs to be done, that means you just get to hold on to the problems that you're currently holding on to. You, you're going to keep holding the beach ball underwater, and that's really exhausting. Holding the beach ball underwater constantly just so that it doesn't come up and rise above the surface so other people can see it or so you can see it. I'd rather it come up to the surface so that we can pop it. Most people are so afraid of seeing their beach ball that they never allow it to come above surface so it can be popped. And therefore, they just hold it down for the rest of their lives. And I'm telling you, that's not a better option. So this is the work that needs to be done. There's nobody that can't do it. There's not a single person that cannot do this work. It's just most people won't. Most people won't because of their perceptions of what it means. And, and so most people will continue to try to avoid the short-term pain of what it means to address the actual issues to actually untie the knots that doesn't they don't think that's going to be pleasurable so they don't want to do it and because of that they live with the poison that's in their body for the rest of their lives you guys that's not a better option even if it was going to be excruciatingly painful for a short period of time but after you got rid of that you were able to live a life of bliss and stop holding yourself back and know what true love is for yourself and for others and know what forgiveness is and know what happiness is and you know know all of the emotions that you want to know at a deeper level even if it was going to be excruciatingly painful for a short period of time I say jump into it now fast let's get that clock ticking most people spend the majority of their time avoiding short-term pain that then turns into long-term pain forever and it's deeper pain and it's worse pain don't make that choice what I'm telling you is that this stuff is scary, but it's simple. It's not difficult. It's it's not going to, to, to be super painful, and it's worth it. If you're not willing to do that, then you just have to let go of your desire to get rid of the protection mechanism. Your desire to get rid of, you know, your desire to get a true breakthrough, you just have to let go of that. If you would rather wrestle with the beach ball for the rest of your life, that's great. I'm not one to say you need to make any certain choice in your life. I'm just telling you one choice involves this and gives you that outcome. Another choice involves this and gives you another outcome. You can't try to follow one path and expect the outcome of the other one. That's 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 my uh, you know that's my advice. That's my truth. Know what you're getting into, and if you want to keep wrestling with the symptoms, that's fine. Just don't expect a true breakthrough. Somebody just says it's worse to know you could have been awesome. <sighs> my God, those words just literally hurt my heart. You could have been awesome. I mean, that is living in regret and shame and self-judgment and and I relate to all of that. That's one of the reasons why it affected me as I just read them. I relate to that. That's how I lived my life for a long time. And that's not what life is supposed to be about. That's not the way I believe your creator created you to experience life in that kind of self-judgment and, and self-hatred and shame or whatever you know feelings you're feeling about that. And the reality is you're not done. 
you can decide that your next chapter starts today and it doesn't matter what was written in the previous chapters you're gonna write the next one differently but what I'm telling you is that if you want the if, if you want the the contribution and the um, you know if you want your body to come along right if you want a neurological shift then you've got to do this kind of work right so many of you've seen a picture of the iceberg like this and the iceberg is a really cool analogy for how we live our life you know the amount of unconscious mind below the surface the amount of conscious mind I love it as an analogy for sabotage but I want you to understand is that if we were to somehow get rid of the iceberg that's above the water right now like a blowtorch or you know some other way if we melted it if we were to get rid of that iceberg the the top part of the iceberg the bottom part of the iceberg wouldn't just stay where it is it would rise and let's say that 10% of the iceberg is above water right now a new 10% would rise above the surface because the iceberg needs buoyancy and it needs that balance right so the iceberg would just place the 10% below the surface with what just was removed so that it can still maintain the whole system and I want you to understand that's how our mind works too that's why I said if you got rid of your perfectionism or procrastination or one of your other um, protection mechanisms they would just be replaced by something else so I don't want you to work above the surface I want you to be able and willing to do the work below the surface so I've mentioned identities here and I'm gonna get into specifically these five essential ingredients but I wanted to create a, a framework right I wanted to create a foundation for all of this the motivational problems that we have in our lives are really if we boil it down for me it's it's conflicting identities we have identities that have all kinds of different uh, behavior patterns they have different beliefs I'm gonna explain all that in a second and these identities literally operate like different personalities you know imagine if you had 30 different personalities inside of you and one personality was driven to succeed and another personality was scared to death of the spotlight one personality was all into health and nutrition and another personality because of arrested development was all about emotionally eating one personality deeply craves love and another personality is afraid of being hurt again if you had all these personalities and they were all vying they were all competing to grab the wheel and be in control of your system what would that look like and what I'm telling you is that's exactly what's happening what's happening is we've got all of these different competing identities that are in conflict with each other that want different things from one another and that's where all of our challenges come from that's where the sabotage actually comes from so that's why you can't intellectually solve these problems in other words you can intellectually understand something but not emotionally behave that way right and I already talked about that earlier now each of these I'm not going to go too deep into this uh, because it would just get a little convoluted and this is where the individual attention is really important but each of these identities has three driving forces it has a predominant need it has a predominant lie and it has a predominant question so for instance one of my personalities uh, the predominant need is to feel loved the predominant lie of this personality is that I'm not good enough and then the predominant question is how can I get you to approve of me so when that identity is in control I am a people pleaser I avoid conflict I don't want to make decisions I don't want to be wrong I don't want to step on anybody's toes I don't want to be in anybody's way that's the effect of that identity and I'm constantly asking for approval energetically or verbally and as soon as somebody approves of me it's not enough because my lie is that I'm not good enough anyway so they're lying to me so I need to find it from somebody else but then I've got another identity that really wants to be successful predominant need is, is to be significant on the planet right and and that identity is in severe conflict with this identity of I'm not good enough right so 
I just wanted to give you a, a, a real quick overview of what these identities can look like. But again, this is, somebody says, are you my twin? I, I think so. I think so, Gretchen. I think a lot of people are very similar. I believe most of us are very similar at the core. What gives us our core pains and what our core fears are. Most of us are very similar. We only differ in the details. My details are different than yours, but your pain is the same as mine. Your desires are the same as mine. The details are different. For you and Mary Kay, the desire might be to get into a pink Cadillac. For me, my desire might be to write a best-selling book. Our details are different, but the desire is the same. The desire is to be significant in people's lives. The desire is to be successful and leave a mark and an impact and what have you, right? Yeah, several of you are saying, like, this is me. This is a twin. So we have all of these identities that are committed to something and their commitments are in conflict. That's why our behavior is in conflict. It's the commitment conflict at a deeper level of, of our identities that's causing all of the problem, right? Now, some of these identities we can look at and we can dissolve certain identities that no longer serve us whatsoever. It's like we shine a light on them and they go away. We don't need them anymore. Other identities have been hiding in the corner, and we need to grow those identities. We need to shine a bigger light on those identities. Some identities we just need to shift a little bit. We, we might need to redefine what success is, or we might need to redefine what money is, or we might need to challenge the beliefs of certain identities because, remember, these beliefs were created for most of us when we were toddlers, and they just haven't been challenged. That's why we haven't changed them. That's why so much of the stuff doesn't make sense to our intellectual adult mind. It's because the conflicts are happening at a very uh, immature level, right? And so each identity really has seven layers to it. Each identity has memories, beliefs, values, drivers, skills, habits, and language. The memories are stored in your body. The beliefs are the, are the things that you believe to be true based on those memories that once upon a time happened to you. The values are what's important to you based on your beliefs. Your drivers are what causes you to take action, what drives you to act. Certain identities will have very different drivers for action. Right? In one of your identities, you might be driven to act if somebody yells at you. In another identity, you might be driven to totally retreat if somebody yells at you. And your identities also have different sets of skills and at the very least different access to skills. So in some of your identities, skills that you actually have are not accessible. If you go up and try to talk to a woman in Mary Kay, you might try to warm chat some lady. You know how to speak. You know how to say the things that you've rehearsed. But in that moment, your identity of uh, you know, retreating, maybe you have an identity that's afraid of the spotlight and causes you to clam up, causes you to almost black out, causes you to forget your lines. In that moment, that identity is not allowing you to access the skills of speaking that you have. But you don't have access to it while this identity is in control. And then each identity has its own set of habits and each identity has its own language. Now here's the thing. They are formed top down, one through seven. I wrote them purposefully in that order. But when we try to change our lives, we usually work on them bottom up. We usually go with our language and our habits, which is above the surface. These are the observable things. So we do affirmations or we change our internal language and we try to motivate ourselves. We try to work on the habits that we have. We try to work on our behaviors. We try to get up earlier. We try to stop eating certain things. But we're addressing the top two weakest layers when there are five other ones that are not being addressed. That's why there's not going to be any significant change. Let me know if this is making sense. There's not going to be any significant change because the bottom five layers have not been addressed and those are the most important ones. That's where all the conflict lives. That's where the identities are really running rampant. So you can't just go up, uh, up at the top and go, hey, can all of you guys just uh, just stop and uh, make me not ever eat cake again. Yeah, that's fantastic. That sounds cool until your emotional eating identity shows up one day because you feel heartbreak and it doesn't 
know what to do differently and the heal and the wound hasn't been healed before and there are no habits to to keep you on path and so all you have is this conscious demand that's literally impossible for your unconsciousness to produce so here is the title of the webinar what are the five essential ingredients it's these five somebody just typed in it's hard to believe an affirmation when you believe it is crap exactly you might have a conscious affirmation that you write and you want to believe but your beliefs down at the val down at the second layer there they don't believe that so it doesn't matter how much you argue with your beliefs they'll win especially when their beliefs are tied to memories in your body. How are you going to intellectually convince a memory in your physical body? If, you, if in your body you feel like you're not good enough based on memories that happen to you and then you consciously just basically argue with yourself that you are good enough, your body will win. All of the time your body will win. And in fact, the more that you argue with your body, the more it strengthens its position. So most people's affirmations, when they have affirmations that are in direct opposition to deep-seated beliefs, their affirmations actually strengthen the, the negative beliefs. So this is what we have to do, you guys. This is what we have to focus on. We have to address these internal conflicts. Now, this is as much information as I can give you in a general sense. The only, the, the best way I know to handle this is to seek the help of somebody that knows about it, right? And I live in the world of coaching. My life was transformed, as I said earlier, by a life coach that helped me identify all the things that I'm talking to you now about. And that's the only thing that changed my life. Up until that time, I had been going to a bunch of seminars. I had been working on my motivation. I had been doing affirmations. Nothing shifted. But as soon as he helped me make this below the surface change, I didn't even need the motivation anymore. I didn't need the affirmations anymore. I was lit up on fire. I didn't need to motivate myself to keep going because I was unstoppable. So do you want to continue to strengthen your motivation tactics or do you want to become unstoppable and not need the motivation tactics? Right? That's the main question that you have for yourself. So my best suggestion for this, and really the only thing that I know to be truly fundamentally transformational, is coaching with an emphasis on these five elements. Not coaching in like being told what to do or telling yourself what to do, coaching with people that can dive into those five elements and help you see what you're not able to see so that you can have the shifts that you might not be able to have and when you make those kinds of foundational changes some of the results in your Mary Kay business can be drastic because you won't be fighting yourself somebody said earlier you love this business and you can't seem to do it you're fighting yourself and I don't think it's okay to fight against something that you absolutely love I would rather you remove the conflict and then get out of your way and then go full force into not just Mary Kay that you love, but every element of your life that you love and stop holding yourself back. So the changes can be drastic. Your sales can increase crazily, crazily, if that's a word. Your results, your recruiting, I mean, you can see tremendous results in your business once you get out of your way, as long as you're willing to do the actual work that needs to be done. So I want to speak for a few minutes about two things, two main things, coaching and money. And then I'll open it up for a little bit of Q&A probably. So how do you know if you need a coach? See, I always thought you needed a coach if you were a weak individual and you were dumb and uh, you couldn't figure things out on your own. That was my belief around having a coach. And then I hired my first coach after I had that breakthrough I told you about. My life completely changed. And I, in a very short period of time, I started to make a lot of money. I've since made millions of dollars. Not that that is the definition of success, but I'm more present with my kids. I feel like my life has slowed down. I feel like, I've, I, I feel like my life goes five times slower now than it used to. And I had a really good life before. 
but I'm more present. I get more out of every single moment. I get more joy. I get more satisfaction. I get more life. So I can't even articulate. I can't adequately put into words what coaching has done for me, both internally and externally, in terms of what we'd be able, what I've been able to create in my business. So what I've learned is that coaching is the missing element for everybody. I think every single person on this planet would do better with a coach. I mean, I still have my own coaches, and I am a coach. I think I'm a pretty good coach, and I still have my own coaches. Why? Because I can't see my own blind spots. I still can't untie the knots with the same hands that tied them while they're changing the passwords. So I need my own coaches from the outside to ask questions that I'm not aware of or that I'm not willing to ask or I'm not willing to answer. I need them to see connections that I can't see from the inside. So everybody could do better with a coach, regardless of where you are in your life right now. So here's how you know if you need a coach. You're not getting the most out of yourself. Now let me tell you, your brain biologically is not designed to get the most out of you. Your brain biologically is designed to keep you comfortable. And we all know that our biggest goals and dreams are beyond our comfort zone. So how can you push yourself to achieve your biggest goals and dreams that are beyond your comfort zone when your brain, your most valuable, most powerful internal asset, has as its highest priority to keep you in the middle of your comfort zone? I just want you to, to soak that in for a second. How can you get the most out of you which requires you to move beyond your comfort zone when your most powerful asset is biologically programmed to keep you comfortable. That's why no human being will ever get the most out of themselves. It's just not biologically possible. So this doesn't mean that you're dumb. It doesn't mean that you're weak. It doesn't mean that you're not disciplined. It means that you're personalities and your identities are not working together properly yet. They're still in conflict. We have to deal with the stuff below the surface. So if you're not getting the most out of yourself, if you've hit a plateau in your results, if you're a human being and your brain is still working properly, then that means you could really benefit from a coach. And this is the exact opposite of what I used to believe. If you're intelligent, if you're strong, if you're fully committed to your biggest goals and dreams, then you probably need a coach to get there. Now, I want to be very blunt and borderline controversial on this. If something is not working for you, in other words, you know what to do, but you're not doing it. You've been working at certain things for many, many years, and you're just not able to clear the, the problems or to get yourself in motion. If something is not working for you, you will not get your breakthrough in a group setting because a group setting can only provide you one size fits all approach. Like in this setting right now, I can only give you general solutions. I cannot give any one of you individual solutions until we speak one-on-one. -on -one. And you need one-on-one -on -one solutions to clear the deepest, the tightest knots. You need the one-on-one -on -one stuff. You can't get it just in a general solution. You will also not get your breakthrough on your own because of what I said. But third, this is what I want you to really, really get. You're not going to get your breakthrough inside the same container that you're currently operating in. Inside the same framework. Inside the same perspective. Now let me be super blunt here. If you have been in Mary Kay for a long time, now before I finish what I'm going to say, I love this company. There's nothing that is going to come out of my mouth in a few seconds that is meant to be demeaning to the company demeaning to anybody in the company, or anything negative whatsoever. And I would say this about every single company in the direct sales world. I would say this about every single institution and environment on the planet. This is not a Mary Kay specific statement. It's only because it's a Mary Kay specific webinar. I would say this exact same thing about all environments on the planet based on all of my years of experience and research. If you've been in Mary Kay for a long time, you've heard most of what you're going to hear. You've been hearing from certain people who have every intention of helping you and they are doing the best they can and everybody's doing the best they can, including you. But what I want you to understand is that 
if you haven't gotten a true breakthrough inside the container that you've been in, it probably won't come from there. Because if it was going to come from there, it probably would have already. Now, if something changes fundamentally and significantly inside that container, and you're not just learning the same thing through the same people over and over and over again, but you're learning maybe new things from different people, then yeah, then change can occur. But I'm just saying a different version of you're not going to keep repeating the same recipe and expecting different results, right? And we use that all the time. Doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting different results is insanity, right? So the same container that you're operating in, now remember I'm saying if something's not working, I'm not saying that you can't have a breakthrough, a true fundamental breakthrough in Mary Kay. You absolutely can. I know plenty of people who have. But if you've been searching for that for five years, 10 years, 20 years, two years, and it hasn't come yet, then something significant has to change. And one of the things that I really suggest you entertain is getting an outside perspective from outside of the container. And nothing needs to conflict with anything that you're learning in your business or needs to change anything in your family life or anything like that. Like we don't need to, to make any kind of more conflict. But the basic principle that I'm going on is that we fall into these patterns. And a lot of times if you're talking to people that have the same background as you, they have the same beliefs as you, they've been living in the same container as you, they might not be able to help you get out of that container. Number one, because maybe they haven't gotten out of that container or the way they got out of the container is different than the way you need to get out of the container. And when I say get out of the container, I'm not talking about quitting Mary Kay. I'm talking about getting out of whatever's holding you back, right? Getting out of your sabotage, whatever that is. And so this is just what I've learned and I apply it to my own life as well. And the bottom, the, the basic principle, the bottom line is if you've been following a certain recipe for a significant amount of time, chances are you won't get any more out of it than you already have in this particular breakthrough conversation I'm talking about. Hopefully this is landing the way I'm intending it to land. I don't want it to be offensive. I just want to be honest, right? It's, it, it's the truth. Most breakthroughs have to come from a different perspective than the one that you're currently in because the one that you're currently in, the recipe you're currently following is producing what you're currently getting. And so something else needs to be addressed. Something else needs to be looked at. So what if you were able to just completely change everything and you stopped working against yourself, you stopped beating yourself up, you started acting 100% in alignment with who you are and what you're committed to and all of that stuff. You had the awareness. You had the understanding. You had self-control. You could get rid of all these conflicts. What if you were able to just snap your fingers and change everything basically? How much more money would you make on a monthly basis? I want to ask a specific money question in Mary Kay because I want to talk about money for a second. How much more money would you be making in Mary Kay? And I want you to type this in. Type this into the webinar chat box. If you were to just clear the sabotage that you have, how much more money would you be making? Somebody says 2,500, 5,000 a month, thousands a month, uh, thousands, 10,000, wow, $5,000, $500, thousands, thousands, thousands. At least 50% more. Great, thousands, ten thousand. So most of you are pretty ambitious in what you could create, right? Somebody says I already saw 1,000 tangibly. Awesome. So now what I want you to do, somebody says enough to cry about. See, I don't want you to live in this state of feeling not enough. You know, I don't want you to live in this state of of being so restricted that you feel like crying. That's not the way life is meant to be lived, in my opinion. So whatever dollar amount you just said, just to be a little more conservative, I want you to cut that in half. So if you said 5,000, I want you to cut it in half, $2,500.
and I want you to apply that to the cost of not taking action. See, most people are more afraid of taking action than they are of not taking action. The way the human brain works is it says, if I take action, what bad thing might happen? And the answer to that keeps us stuck. The answer to that is she might say no, I might feel embarrassed, I might fail. The human brain is, is programmed to think about the negative consequences of taking action because remember the human brain is programmed to keep us in the comfort zone and the best way to do that is to not take any significant action that could rock the boat and get us into emotional trouble. So it's designed to keep us safe which means it works on the question what's the cost of doing? What's the cost of taking action? And the answers are usually scary and that's why it causes us to not want to take action. That's why we stay stuck, because we're afraid of a negative outcome. But what if you change the question of what's the cost of not taking action? See, the most successful and most significant people that I've met are more afraid of regret than they are failure. The regret of not living life the way they want to live life, the regret of not making an impact, the regret of not making a difference, the regret of not evolving into the person that they could evolve into, the regret of not teaching their family what they want to teach them, the regret of not becoming the person that God created them to become. That kind of regret is so much deeper than failure. I mean, what's worse, the idea that you don't become who you're meant to become or the idea that some woman says no if you ask her a question? What's worse? I believe for all of us, the regret of not taking action is worse. It's just most of us are not programmed to think that way. And so I want you to be programmed from this point forward to think that way. Because asking yourself, what's the cost of not taking action, will give you a much better answer than what's the cost of taking action. If you live your life, what's the cost of taking action, the best thing you can do is solidify exactly where you are right now. Because you'll constantly be afraid. Your default response will be why you shouldn't act. And I want your default response to be why you should act. I don't want the fire of fear to be in front of you that you have to move away or you have to move through. I want you the I want the fire of fear to be underneath you, the one that you have to move off of. That's what the most significant people are driven by, the fear of regret. So let's take that number. If you said $5,000, I want you to cut it in half. So let's say $2,500. Now this is your number. This is your number. You said. If you were to shift all of the internal sabotage, this is the money you could be making. Then that's the money you're losing every month. That's the money you're leaving on the table. That's the money you're losing. That's the impact you're not having every single month in your words that you don't clear your sabotage. Now, I'm not saying this to try to get you to you know, buy something from my company. If you do that, that's great. We'll support you however we can. But if you don't, that's great too. But you got to think this way. What's the actual cost every single month that I don't make this change? And I'm not ever going to put answers in anybody's mouth. This is your answer. But if you start thinking that way, then your brain will be operating around the fear of regret versus the fear of failure. And you have to operate that way. Now finally, let's talk about money. If you don't have all the money that you want and you're in Mary Kay, it's an alignment problem. It's not a skill set problem, it's an alignment problem. You're not fully aligned in your purpose and you're not fully aligned with all of those identities and personalities we've been talking about. You have some operating identity that when it's in control keeps you from money or keeps you from keeping money. But here's the thing, you own an ATM machine, you are in business, you have the ability to sell products that are proven, that people want, 
these products are so proven that this company is well over 50 years old. It's one of the strongest companies on the planet. It's one of the strongest companies in all of direct sales. Why? Because these products are proven. So you have at your disposal proven products that you can sell at any time, which means you own an ATM machine, but you're not activating it. The reason you're not activating it is because of all the stuff that I've talked about over the last hour plus. So you have to invest in fixing the foundation, not in fixing the surface symptoms. Don't just try to get more out of what's not already working. So I don't have anything for you to purchase on this webinar. I don't have a link for you to go to and, and pay us anything and get anything in return. What I have for you is an offer. My invitation to you is that you get individual attention so that you can get help identifying where you uniquely, personally, individually need to focus. I have a team of coaches. I've trained them on all the things that I've talked to you about. We do this work on a daily basis. This is what we do. We help people identify where their conflicts are. We help people identify what needs to be healed. We help people identify what needs to be reframed. We help people release certain identities. We help people increase other identities. We help people make the internal shifts in those five essential areas that are needed for true breakthroughs. And then after that, either we help them or, we don't, or they don't need our help anymore with behaviors with time management skills with motivation they don't we don't need that stuff once you make the internal shifts <clears throat> so what we focus on is anything that would help you make a fundamental change a transformational change a neurotransformational change in your life and therefore in your business so we focus on neurotransformation core identities and created identities hold on a sec <clears throat> Sorry, I needed some water. Uh, we look at money patterns, limiting beliefs, the internal drivers that you have, values, conflicts, healing any of the trauma that might be living in your body that you either know about or you don't know about, <clears throat> any business habits that need to be shifted, health habits, relationships, uh, environments, language, internal, external language, anything and everything. We are basically a life coaching company that applies principles to help people grow their business. We are not just a business coaching company. We are a life coaching company that has learned and studied the Mary Kay world specifically for many, many years. And so we know the world, we know the language, we know the pressures, we know the patterns, we know the habits. And we want to, you know, we help people shift the foundation so that they can get out of their way and make a tremendous shift in their Mary Kay business. But it's not just a Mary Kay focus, it's more of a holistic focus. So the way to book a free consultation is you click on that, uh, you go to that, um, that website right there. And I'm gonna type the website in here so all of you can go there. Beancaddycoach.com forward slash consultation. So everybody should have gotten that in your little chat box. It should give you a bunch of different options going forward. And you can book a call uh, soon or you can book a call in a couple weeks if that works better for you. But um, that's how to book a free consultation. There's no obligation to do anything beyond the consultation. If nothing else, you'll get a trained coach's perspective on where you might be stuck, what you might need to look at what you can do to clear some of the things, to untie some of the knots. And, and if that's all you want, that's all you want. If you want to continue with coaching or other programs, then you can have that discussion. But whether you do this work with my company or not, I'm telling you this is the work that needs to be done if and only if you need a true breakthrough. That's the work that needs to be done. For those of you that are in Australia or other parts of the country, you can do a consultation in um, you can do a consultation uh, like on Skype or or Zoom or some other way. Okay, 
So to get the bonus of the seven mind shifts of sales, uh, pinkcaddycoach.com forward slash bonus, and it's a password protected site, and that password is bonus. So you click on that, you go there, you type in password, and uh, and you'll get the seven mind shifts of sales that will really help you with shifting some of the things that need to be shifted for sales. Next, let me uh, do the final thing here, which is to pick a winner for a private coaching session with me. Um, and to do that, let's go to the website. Let's go to the interwebs. So what I'm going to do is click on random number generator. Some of you might not have known this, that you can pick a number uh, online. So right now I see 80 people on the line. And uh, I'm going to, in a moment, click generate, and it's going to tell me, it's going to give me a number, and then I will go into the list of attendees, and that will be the person that wins the uh, $500 coaching package with me. Eight. Eight. Let's see. Who is the eighth person on our list? I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Anna Gron. Anna Gron. Or Anna Gron. G-R-A-H-N. You are the next contestant on the transformation is right. That was a very weak attempt at humor. I apologize. Um, so Anna or Anna, please email me. You can respond to any of the emails that you got, uh, or you can email directly uh, Sean at pinkcaddycoach.com, and we'll get you set up with your uh, invitation. And everybody else, um, hopefully, let me see if I have any more slides. I actually forget if I have any more slides. Uh, no, that's it. So um, there's the consultation again, pinkcaddycoach.com forward slash consultation. Okay, here's a great question. Somebody says, what's the difference between a coach and a counselor? You know, not everybody who's a coach operates the same way. Not everybody who's a counselor operates the same way. So this is not a condemnation of counseling or anything like that. Uh, some people, ex it, it, the difference is in the philosophy, right? I can just speak to the philosophy of coaching, me personally and my coaches and, and what our philosophy is. Our intention is to clear whatever blocks there are. Some people experience counseling or therapy or coaching. I mean, some coaches, you know, not all coaches kind of operate under the same philosophy either. But some people experience uh, certain counseling or therapy as just trying to understand the problems without clearing the problems. So our philosophy is we identify the problems so that we can clear them. We don't identify the problems just so that we can cope with the problems. We don't want to cope. We want to clear. So I'm not going to say that all counselors operate that way because they don't. I know several, a bunch of counselors are fantastic, uh, but some do. And that's the, the experience that some people have that they've shared with me is that they feel like all they're doing is just coping with these problems. And that's not the fundamental philosophy of our coaching. Our coaching is identify where the actual issues are. A lot of the stuff that I've gone over in this webinar and then clear them away. That's what we really want to do. Yeah, somebody says, uh, I didn't win, but I want to coach. I've tried a counselor. It didn't work for me, so send a link, please. I absolutely will. Thank you for that. Cool. Dana, I'm glad you got some value out of this. Um, somebody says, I did a consultation two years ago. Just do another one. I'm not going to be a stickler for, you know, hey, have you done a consultation before? Uh, then you don't get another one. So just do another one. Um, somebody says, can't seem to get anywhere. Uh, as always, I love you and the way you think. Thank you. I appreciate that. Neurotransformation is just the perfect explanation. Yes. 
this actually pretty new awareness for me, like just in this last year, neurotransformation, where our neurology changes, where we get rid of fears or other conflicts in our body, or we create feelings in our body that we didn't have before, such as confidence in certain uh, situations, etc. And it's a neurological change. It's the only long-lasting fundamental change. Uh, somebody says, does coaching make sense when I'm working full-time and don't have a lot of time to work my business? Absolutely, because remember, coaching is not just about your business. And our coaching is designed to not be in conflict in any way with Mary Kay. It's designed to help you in your life. And so a lot of times our coaching doesn't have anything to do with Mary Kay because that's not where you need the support in your life. And maybe it's maybe our coaching can help you create more time that you want to work in your Mary Kay business, or it could help you just calm any of the mental chatter or challenges that you're having about not working in your Mary Kay business. Maybe the coach can help you get more out of the small amount of time that you have to work in your Mary Kay business. Uh, maybe your coach can help you with relationships or with you know health or, or eating or whatever. So there's really no issue in life that our coaching can't address. That's the kind of coaching that I learned. That's the kind of coaching that I trained my coaches on. It's really anything at all in life uh, where there's any challenge or conflict whatsoever. Um, everybody could use a coach. Yeah, somebody just says, uh, the best results I got were personally and not professionally. That's the biggest transformation. Thank you for that. And uh, and the personal transformations usually help the professional results as well. Somebody asked, this is a great question, what's the best way to get the most out of a 30-minute consult? Just show up, honestly. Just show up. It's, it's better if you show up without anything planned or without any agenda and let the coach ask the questions that will probably produce conversations that you wouldn't have planned for. My experience is that's when the best coaching calls occur is when there's no previous expectation or agenda. Like I'm going to ask about this. Now when you're in coaching, you might have those specific intentions for sure. But when it comes to doing a consultation, just like an it's like an exploratory session. That's really what it is. So when you do an exploratory session, um, don't show up with anything that could potentially drive that session. It's better to just turn it over to the coach. Yeah, somebody says trying to select a day for consultation is not working, so I apologize. Here, for, for any of you that are still on, you want a consultation, just email me. Just respond to the emails that you get and just let me know that you want a consultation and I'll make sure that you get one. I'll also send out an email with the link directly in it for those of you that want um, for those of you who want the consultation. All right, let's see. Please, I want a consultation. Yes, absolutely. I mean Everybody needs a personal, like you need to put yourself under a microscope. Everybody needs that. That's the only way to really get clear on what is holding you specifically back. Um, okay, so I don't see any more questions. Thank you. Some people are talking about their coaching experience. Um, I had a coach, uh, totally helped change my life. Uh, realizing you've had a stall in your life, just in your Mary Kay business, awesome. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. You're welcome. Somebody says, "Who switched off my brain?" is a great book. Just started reading about the neurological effects of our thoughts. Yeah, that's huge. Somebody asks, "What methods do you use to clear conflicts?" So many. Um, and it really depends. Like we as coaches also don't have any agenda. We don't have an agenda that we're going to do a certain exercise with a certain person. So we as coaches believe that coaching is really about holding a space for somebody 
to untie their own knots and facilitating uh, and guiding them to their own answers. Sometimes that process looks like journal writing. Sometimes the process looks like uh, some kind of guided visualization. Sometimes it's just simple conversation and asking questions that will kind of scramble the patterns a little bit and help you see things that you weren't otherwise seeing. So we have some processes that are relatively deep and that can handle deep, deep trauma healing. The deepest of, of pain and trauma. Um, our coaches are all trained in, in dealing with, with wounds like that. If that comes up, if that's an issue, we certainly don't force that on anybody and we don't you know, uh, decide that you need that. Um, but if it comes up, we have the ability to go that deep. When I teach coaching, I kind of I give an analogy of like scuba diving, right? Sometimes we need to put the gear on and scuba dive deep. Sometimes we just snorkel at the surface. And really good coaches know when to go deep and when to stay at the surface and when to go anywhere in between. So our coaches have the ability to assess when the deep work needs to be done. Uh, if there's healing that needs to be done, when the surface level work needs to be done, you know, when we need to snorkel, when we need to scuba dive, and then the, the exercises, there's any number of exercises, there are a lot of exercises that I've learned that I train my coaches on, um, there's any number of exercises that could then be used to clear some kind of conflict. So it really, really depends. Uh, thank you, Peggy, for that comment, I really appreciate it. Yeah, Sean at PinkCaddyCoach.com. Thank you. Let me copy that and chat that out to everybody just so you know my um, email address. Uh, let's see if there's any other questions. Yeah, you should be able to go online tomorrow and book your session. Somebody says, does insurance accept coaching? Insurance generally does not accept coaching, but different insurances are, are different. Um, but usually it does not accept coaching. What if you've been through this process and worked on yourself a ton and haven't gotten anywhere but more stuck? Well, I don't know what you've tried. Um, but what I know is that everything you've tried hasn't produced the result that you want and what you want is worth continuing. So something new has to shift. And even if you've done coaching in the past, you know, maybe you're different. Maybe you just need a different coach. Maybe um, because you're in a different spot in your life, you know, sometimes even the same coach can provide different outcomes. But just because you've tried something before and it hasn't given the results that you want, if the results are big enough, you'll keep trying. So please don't stop just because you haven't created the outcomes that you want. Excellent. Okay, so I don't see any other questions. Uh, thank you all for joining. And, oh, somebody says, are these individual coaching sessions or groups? These are all individuals. These are one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. Let's see. Awesome, yeah, what I want in my life and Mary Kay is beyond worth it, absolutely. All right, so um, I have a lot of comments in here, so there might be some questions that are mixed in that I'm not getting to, and I apologize for that. If you do have a question that I didn't get to, then go ahead and just email it to me uh, or post it in any of the groups that you're a part of that I'm running, and um, and I'll answer as best I can. So. So many of you have been on this line for a long, long time. I honor and appreciate your commitment to, uh, to just more success in your life and in your business. We're here to support you and help you in any way that we possibly can. So please continue to let us know what you are in need of and how we can support you, and, uh, and we'll do everything that we can. So with that, everyone, have a wonderful rest of your day. Uh, good night, God bless, and we'll talk to you soon.